Hi. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through how to derive the lever rule, which is a way for us to calculate the mass fractions of a phase in a two-phase alloy region. So first of all, let's clarify what we mean by this by drawing a simple phase diagram. So we are going to look at the nickel copper system, which forms a complete solid solution. And on the y-axis, we have temperature. And then on the x-axis, we have the composition, which we'll write in terms of weight percentage of nickel. And in this phase diagram, we have a few phase boundaries, where at high temperatures, we'll have a pure liquid phase. At low temperatures, we have a pure solid phase. And in the middle, we have a liquid plus solid two-phase region. And in this region of interest here, the microstructure might look something like this, where we have a liquid region and a solid region. And the lever rule allows us to calculate how much of each uh, phase that we have for a specific temperature and composition. So often we're given a temperature, so at a certain temperature T and composition, X, uh, we want to find out what are the mass fractions of mass uh, of solid and liquid. So that's the aim of what we want to achieve. So let's have a look at our phase diagram here and say we have our arbitrary temperature T, right? So I've drawn a line across here, which we call a tie line. This is temperature T. And there's a few um, compositions of interest that we want to uh, that we want to note here. So I'll just draw that. So if we drop this uh, tie line down here, we have XL. And what XL is, is the mass fraction, mass fraction of nickel in the liquid phase. So this is how much nickel there is in the liquid. Similarly, we have XS. So XS, as you can guess, is the mass fraction. So mass fraction of nickel in the solid phase for our set temperature. And uh, we're often given or we're considering a certain mass fraction of nickel in the alloy. So that's what we call X. So mass fraction of nickel in the alloy. So this is the complete alloy system. Now, our phase, uh, our lever rule equation looks something like this. So we have ML, which is the uh, mass fraction of solid, uh, of liquid, mass fraction of liquid in our system. That's what we're looking for. And that's equal to XS minus X over XS minus XL. And similarly, we can also write the lever rule in terms of the mass fraction for the solid. So MS, so let's write that down. MS equals mass fraction of solid in our alloy and this is equal to x minus xl over xs minus xl and it's often useful to try and visualize on our phase diagram what we're actually calculating so the denominator of our lever rule equation can be represented by this length of tie line which you can see it's the difference between XS and XL. And if we're calculating, uh, let's say, for example, this part of the lever, this is X, uh, X minus XL, which allows us to calculate the mass fraction of the solid. And then conversely, this region here is XS minus X, which we can use to calculate the mass fraction of um, 
liquid. So these are what um, those terms represent on our phase diagram. Now, it's also important to remember that in our two-phase system where we only have solid and liquid, we can also say that MS plus ML equals 1 because we only have uh, these two phases in the system. So that's our lever rule, but how do we get to these equations? Well, in order to do that, what we have to do is create two independent mass balances. So two independent mass balances. So what does that mean? Well, let's first start off by introducing a few definitions. Let's have capital M, which is the mass of uh, an alloy. All right, so this is the total mass of the alloy we're creating. We also have MS, which is the mass of the solid phase in that material. We have ML, which would be the mass of liquid in our alloy. And we also have, let's say, MNI, which represents the total mass of nickel in our alloy. Of course, that can be any other material, but we're looking at the nickel copper phase diagram in this instance. Now, now that we have this definition, let's think of our, uh, our system and governing equations. So we know we have a two phase system, which only has liquid and solid. So what we can see, say is that the total mass is equal to the mass of the solid plus the mass of the liquid, because they're the only two things that we have in the system. Now, what we can also say is for an arbitrary uh, alloy composition, so this can, have, uh, this can occur for other compositions as well. What we can also say is that the total mass of nickel in our system divided by the mass of our alloy will give me x and if we remember x is the mass fraction of nickel in the alloy so that makes sense and we can manipulate this equation and rearrange it so we can say the mass of the nickel in our system is equal to the mass fraction of nickel multiplied by the mass and what we can do again is we can insert the earlier equation that we just derived so we can say the mass of nickel is equal to the mass fraction of nickel in our alloy multiplied by the mass of the solid plus the mass of the liquid. And this gives us our first independent mass balance. But let's do another independent mass balance of nickel. So independent nickel mass balance. So we're, again, trying to work out how much nickel we have in our system, but we want to do it in a different way. So I can also define the mass of nickel in my system as the uh, mass fraction of nickel in the liquid multiplied by the mass um, of the liquid. So this is mass fraction of nickel in the liquid, right? So this is how much nickel I have in my liquid, plus xs, which is the mass fraction of nickel in the solid, right? So this is how much nickel I have in my solid multiplied by the solid. So you can see that this first term here gives me the mass of nickel in the liquid, right? And the second term over here gives me the mass of nickel in the solid. And they're the only two places that nickel can be. And we've got two different equations now for the mass of nickel. And what we can do is we can equate them together. So we can take 
um, this equation here that we just defined and combine it with this equation. So let's do that now. So if we have x, ms plus ml, that's from our first equation, equal to xl, ml plus xs, ms. Right? So it all makes sense so far. Now, what we can also do is we can divide both sides of this equation by the mass. So if we divide, um, so if we divide by m, what happens to the mass of solid and the mass of liquid is that they become their respective mass fractions. So that, therefore, that becomes lowercase m, ml equals xl, ml plus xs, ms, like that. Now, we also know that we only have two phases in our system. And what we can say is that the mass fraction of solid plus the mass fraction of liquid, therefore, has to equal 1, right? And we can rearrange this equation again so that we can say the mass fraction of the solid is equal to 1 minus the mass fraction of the liquid. And again, we can substitute this equation into our earlier equation here. So let's do that and see what we get. So we have x multiplied by 1 minus ml plus ml equal to xl uh, ml uh, plus xs uh, 1 minus ml, right? And what we can do here is we can simplify our equation slightly. So these two ml values cancel out. So let's just write that back out. So we have um, the XL, so Mr. L off here, ML plus X uh, S minus X S M L. So again, this should have been an S. Uh, and then what we can do at this stage is we can rearrange our equation. So let's move the XS that we have uh, to the left hand side equal to XL ML minus XS ML. And then what we can do is we can pull out that ML value. So we have X minus XS equal to ML XL minus XS. And again, what we can do is we can rearrange this equation. And in this case, what I'm going to do is times by minus one to get it in the form that we're familiar with. So rearrange and times by minus one. And what that gives us is ml, which is our mass fraction of liquid. That's what we're looking for, equal to x s minus x over x s minus x l. And that is where our lever rule comes from. And I could repeat this process if I wanted to again um, and make ml equal to 1 minus ms uh, and run through that same derivation where that would have then given me ms, so the mass fraction of solid in my alloy equal to x minus x. L over x s minus x l. So that's where the two forms of the lever rule come from. So hopefully that's been useful in terms of explaining and visualizing where the derivation for the lever